Sialography is becoming an outdated technique. Uh, we still do conventional sialography on, on many of the uh, on many of our patients. There is a push towards cross-sectional uh, sialography, but it hasn't really gained momentum. There is some thought that a conventional sialogram has some therapeutic effect. That is, um, sometimes you can wash out debris when you do a sialogram, and the patients will feel better. However, the presence of sial endoscopy has really um, put sialography on a back burner, and there are fewer and fewer indications for this technique. Uh, this is an example of, of conventional sialography of the submandibular gland. Uh, we begin by doing scout uh, films to look for stones, and then we cannulate through the puncta. In this case, the puncta of Wharton's duct is right on either side of the frenulum and the floor of mouth. We inject our contrast material, and we take our sialographic pictures like this one, and then we give a sialagogue, usually lemon juice, to drain all that contrast back out and make sure that none of it is entrapped within the uh, within the ducts. The contrast material that we use has changed over time. We used to use an oil-based contrast material, but it has become prohibitively expensive. Uh, a single dose of that now costs 1,000 US dollars. It is prohibitive for this use. And so uh, we have moved to water-based contrast agents. They, uh, they're different, and they have some different uh, properties to them. Um, we have experimented a bit with CT sialography, where we use diluted um, water-based contrast agent, or MRI sialography, where we use diluted gadolinium contrast and inject it the same way. But again, these have not really caught on uh, as much as the conventional sialography. Um, this was an example, let me go back, this is an example of a normal sialogram. Notice that we have a uniformly tapering duct with very smooth walls. There is a regular branching pattern within the gland where each of the daughter uh, ducts is smaller than its parent duct. And there is no displacement of the ducts within the gland itself. Here's an example of an abnormal parotid sialogram. Notice here that the, that the main Stenson's duct has areas of dilatation and stenosis. We call this beading or a string of pearls appearance. Notice that some of the daughter uh, branches within the gland are larger than their parent. Um, these are the signs of chronic inflammation. Now, it doesn't tell us what caused the chronic inflammation. It may be autoimmune. It may be recurrent in infections. But we know that this patient has had severe chronic inflammation of that gland. I want to point out one extra duct here. This duct is coming off very early, way before the rest of the gland. That is the duct leading to the accessory lobe of the product, which we discussed earlier.